Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life at La Four. So today I'm on my first farm here in Australia. So this is the first episode of our new series of farming in Australia. So of course mum and dad are still going to be doing the farming back home in France. So you will see episodes on that. And then I'm hopefully, hopefully going to go around and film more farms here in Australia. Um, so today's farm, I'm on Laffy Family Farms. So a big thank you to them for letting me come and film them. So they're going to bring us around and show us their livestock and uh, how they farm over here. And we'll get to see the differences and similarities between farming here and back home in France or Ireland and Europe. So Laffy Family Farm are an organic farm. So they have sheep. Um, so we're going to go around and see them and they're going to show us how they do that. And then they also trade in cattle. I believe the cattle aren't organic, but we'll get to see some of them and see what breeds they have over here and how they go about their daily farming. We're also going to talk about how they manage with the different climates and their different seasons and everything like that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to leave a comment, let us know what you think. Let us know anything else that you want to see on future farms. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on any of our future episodes and give it a thumbs up because it really does help out the channel. Really hope you guys enjoy it. So now let's get to the video. Okay, so obviously sheep are the main folks on the farm. So how many sheep do you have? Uh, we've got just under 600 head at the moment. Um, we've got about 450 years and they're all about to start lambing. And um, here we are with some of the lambs and that we're just trying to finish off and, and a few, and the rams, we've taken the rams out and we'll rejoin them later. And uh, so you, do you lamb them twice a year? We've just started a program where we're going to try and get two lots of lambs a year, do two joinings a year, yeah. so um, we hope that works really well. And what age do you sell the lambs off then? Um, probably around the, when they're 40, 45 kilos is okay. a good weight when they're yeah. finished. But uh, if you have too many, you can sell them a bit younger to someone else who will finish them around that 30 okay. kilos. And yeah. uh, where, where would you sell them? Where would be the market for that? Um, there's, we do a few direct sales where we get them killed and, and um, packed and sell them packs. And then also um, there's a group in Toowoomba that buy organic lamb. Mm -hmm. But you have to get them trucked down into New South Wales to get killed at the, okay. at the abattoir there. And then um, there's a few other guys. So there's one at Roma. He'll buy a few and, yeah, a few and then you have to just sell into the conventional market if you have any left over. All right, and so you have these big dogs here. How many of these do you have on the farm? Uh, we've got seven of them. Yeah. And so these all uh, stay out in the fields with the sheep and protect them? Yeah, they live out here with the sheep and we feed them. And, and um, yeah, they bond with the sheep and they just stay with them. And they work really well because we have a bit of dog pressure, um, some feral dogs. And um, these guys work really well. So what is the biggest pest or the biggest problem that you'd have on the, on the farm with the sheep? Uh, probably, yeah, the feral dogs, and then we also have uh, foxes that, that get newborn lambs. Mm -hmm. Right, and so these dogs, they just live out with them all year round? Yep. What yeah, breed are they? A Marama. Marama. They're originally from Italy. Okay. Yeah. And, and they, so they're the protective dogs? Yeah, and they just bond with the sheep and hang about. And um, we can pat these dogs and be friendly with them, but they, they don't follow you home, and they'd rather stay with the sheep. They're happy to come and say good day, but they'll yeah. they'll just stay with the sheep. Oh, that's very good. And um, so, what breed are the sheep that you have here? Mainly Australian white sheep. They're a meat breed, and they shed their wool. And um, yeah, they're just bred for their for their meat. And they're a really good eating sheep. And obviously, when I'm when I watch sheep farming back home, there's a lot of things about shearing, and I know that in New Zealand shearing is quite big. So, what way is that over here? How do you maintain their? Uh, we don't have to shear these sheep. They shed their wool. Okay. And um, yeah, that's one of the reasons we have them. It's a bit easier to handle. And um, yeah, they go really well. And do they shed once a year, twice a year? Yeah, usually once. Once a year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so do they have big problems with like um, worms and parasites and things like that? And how would you treat it? Yeah, that is a problem. But uh, we try and, again, shift the stock on a regular basis. They're not left in the same place for too long. and and. Uh, we use a like a diatomaceous earth uh, that we try and get them to eat 
and that helps with the worms. But yeah, good husbandry sort of helps a lot mm -hmm. and keep them healthy. And but last year we had a bad year. It was so wet. It was really no matter what you did, we had that problem. And it was yeah. pretty bad. But everyone was the same. And um, do you have to vaccinate them for anything over here, or what are the rules on? Yeah, we we do have permission to do that, but we we haven't done it. But we're looking into probably starting to do that more now. But it's not mandatory. No. All right. Okay, and so the the lamb twice a year now is what you're looking to get into? Yeah, that's what we're looking to get. Yeah. How long have you been doing sheep on the farm, so? Uh, since about 2014, we've mm -hmm. got our first sheep. And is this the first time you've ever had sheep on the farm, or? Yeah, that's the first time I have, yeah. My grandfather used to have merino sheep and wool and had a shearing shed, and, but um, yeah, since he died back in late 80s, we haven't had sheep at all on the place. And are they, are they doing well so far? Yeah, they, they, they do do well. They're, they're tough in a drought too, the sheep. They're a lot easier to keep alive. They don't need as much maintenance, but um, at the same time, they do die a bit easier than cattle, like with disease and worms and predators and all that. And what would be the, obviously they're all organic, so would you get a better price on the organic meat over here? Yeah, usually you get a premium. Some years when the when the market's right up, there's not much difference, but usually when it drops a bit, you'll get that bit better price when the price is right down. So what would a, what would a lamb be selling for now in this market? Uh, last time I looked, good a good lamb a bit over 40 kilos you're getting around that 180 dollars a head and then um when it's really good it'll get up to you know 270 280 a head is there ever a problem to sell them or is there always a market there somewhere uh there's usually a good market and if we haven't got an organic market there's a, a sale in warwick which is about two and a half hours driveway and you mm -hmm. can we take them over there if we need to get rid of them and so how much land do you have here on the farm altogether? Uh, a bit over 1,500 acres. And it, is that all in one block? Yep. So that's very handy. So did you buy this farm off your dad or get handed down or how did that? Uh, we bought it. Um, this block here was well, the one over there where the old house was. That was owned by a neighbour and mm -hmm. we bought that. And then we bought this block and, and a few others off mum and dad and okay. joined onto it. And I grew up over the road. That's owned by another company now. So, so you farmed this this land all your life, basically. Yeah. All right. And do you like the sheep? Which would you prefer, the sheep and the cattle? Oh. Working with? Yeah, when the sheep play up, it's pretty hard. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like them more and more. But yeah, I just had a lot to learn. And the, mm. the the better you do your job, the easier it gets. And the better you have things set up, like your yards and and uh, fences and water and everything, it, it all works a lot better once you, you set up and you have your boundaries done mm -hmm. properly where they can't get out. So they're all bound in by sheep wire and electric? Yeah, the farm. yeah and have a, having a good boundary makes a difference. I've still got a bit to go with the boundaries, but yeah, the sooner that's done, the better. And so they're all strip grazing, so how often would you change field? Uh, well, like I said before, when it's growing quick, and in summer you get that good quick growth. You try and shift them nearly every day. And then in, when, when it slows down, like now, we've had a frost and the, the grass is burnt off, haying off a bit and it's not growing much at all. And you can slow down your moves just so they, they eat a bit more of it. But you try and keep that, that ground covered. You don't let them stay there until it's flogged to nothing. But you, know, you try and keep it covered and so it'll recover quicker. And you have to do much handling with them apart from when you're moving them? Yeah, so sometimes you have to get them in and um, like taking the rams out and, and drafting off lambs and and uh, when you get these lambs in to sell a few and take a few to the butcher and get them in and um, draft them off, weigh them and, and um, things like that. And just had the rams all tested for okay. um, brucellosis, make sure they weren't infected at all. Okay. And are you looking at increasing the herd any time in the future? Or Yeah, we'd like to get up to around that 700 years and we okay. think we could handle that and, and do just you have, see how we go. Do you get many problems lambing over here? Uh, usually this, this breed's pretty good. Mm -hmm. They um, lamb fairly well.
Okay, so as well as the sheep, you also have cattle here on the farm. Yep. What breed is it mainly that you'd have? Oh, at the moment, there's, it's a real mix, but we've got some good Angus heifers and, um, and then uh, other just crossbreeds. We just trade cattle and whatever's a good buy, and then we've got some Brahmins as well. All right, and um, what are they like to fatten? Are, are they easy to fatten over here or...? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's easy if you use a feed lot where they lock them up and feed <laughs> grain, but on grass it's a lot, it's, it is a lot harder to fatten cattle. And a lot of cattle have been in Australia have been bred for the feedlot um, mm -hmm. industry, so they're a lot bigger frame. But um, the small, medium frame British bred cattle, like these Angus ones, they're a lot easier to fatten on grass. All right. And so, what sort of ages do you buy them, or how do you go about buying? Is it in a mart or a market? Yeah, there's a, a selling complex in Dalby, and then uh, online on Auctions Plus the, um, on the internet. So. Um, that happens every week, both those sales, so you can sell or buy on those two things mainly. Or you can do direct sales, you know, buy direct off someone or sell direct to someone. And so you just go to the market and you'll sell and buy on the same day? Yeah, we try to, yeah. but if we'll try and do it in the same week at, at least, mm -hmm. sort of try and keep it fairly close together. Yeah. And what would be, say, an average, the average price that you'd try and buy around? Like what would be the good prices for cattle at the moment? Uh, it's come right back now, but um, like the other day we got a price for steers around that from 300 to 400 kilos, around at three dollars twenty, three dollars thirty a kilo live weight. So, and back over a year ago they were going for up at five fifty, up near six dollars. So it's come right back. It's nearly half. So it's a good time for buying, but a bad time for selling, I guess. Yeah, but if you do the like sell and buy and keep trading. It, it's it still works. It's it's good doing that instead of buying and then selling later and hoping you got money. All right. And so, do you supplement any feed to them at all, or? No, we try it with the trade cattle. We just um, try and keep our, the grass up to them. Mm -hmm. And um, and if we hit another like a big drought, we either find adjustment or we'd sell them or put them into the feed lot. And we just we move them a lot. Uh, when you have, like in summer, you have fast, the, grows, the grass is growing fast, we try and shift them fairly quickly, like at least once a day. And then when it slows down like now and it's frosted and it's not growing much, you can slow down your moves and get them to eat a bit more. So they just graze all year round? Yep. All right. And so, um, so you don't calve any of the cows or anything like that? You don't put no, them in, just buy and sell? Yeah. We used to have breeders. And mm -hmm. um, and we'd um, yeah, sell their progeny as organic, and but the drought we had to sell a lot of our good breeders, and then we decided not to buy more breeders, just buy trade cattle, and then we're buying more sheep and the, um, expanding on the sheep and breeding with them. And do you sell any of the meat yourselves? Yeah, we still do sell a little bit of beef and uh, get it killed and packed, and um, sell you know, like an eighth pack is the smallest we'd sell. Mm -hmm and then up to a half a beast or whatever people want. Right. Are the cattle organic as well or they're not? No, no most of these are not organic, but um, we treat them like they are organic. It's just simpler to keep our um, organic status if we don't use mm -hmm. any supplements or you know, anything, any mineral is organic with these cattle. But, and we've only got a few organic ones left. And so when did you start getting into cattle? Have, have there always been cattle on the yeah, farm? Yeah, we've or? always had cattle. Always have cattle? Yeah, then we started the sheep, I think back in 2014. It was mm -hmm. the first time we had sheep. And before that, what were you doing then? Just cattle or? Well, all this was, um, we farmed all this. We grew wheat, okay. um, barley and chickpeas in winter and, and summer cereals like sorghum. So you got this farm from your father. How many gen generations have been on this farm so far? Um, it's a, this, I think I'm the fourth. Fourth generation? Yeah, been here about 100 years. 100 years on the land. Yeah. And uh, does your father still come around and farm from time to time? Yeah, he's, he's in town now, but he does come out and help, and he's good if you've got a motor to fix or something like that. He yeah. likes doing that. That's good. That's a lovely farm. So how much land is on the farm? It's a bit over 1,500 acres. 1,500. What would be the kind of size of farm, I guess, over here that you'd need for it to be profitable in some ways? Oh, in this area, about that size. Yeah. 
that, that um, yeah, there's some a lot bigger farms with you know they have thousands of acres where they've mm. they've cropped a big lot of sorghum or you know cotton not far from here. And is there any grants on the land? Any grants? Grants like um, like government help? Do they especially for organic? Do they give any? Oh, not any much. Sort of aids? No. No. no, no, they do. They do help with the floods. If you have damage, they do help with some. Um, and the droughts. To fix, yeah, and droughts, so you, you help with stuff like that, and and setting up drought resistant things. So you get a little bit of help like that. It's good. Okay. Is it Queensland bluegrass? Yeah. And I haven't planted one seed of that. Look, we farm, we didn't farm the farm this paddock. But as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. We put it back, we planted in, you know, introduced stuff, raised grass. The grass just took it back over again. I had one. Is it good feed? Yeah. So these are a cross between. Yeah, well, he's like a brangus, that black fella. And he's more like a sand. Well, she is. She's like a sander. A sander. So a but that's not her calf. Her that calf's not here. Okay. So. Are they parts mental? Or what breed would they be? Ah, uh, they're Braford. Oh, Braford. Is the white heads like smithers? Yeah, Hereford Brahmin cross. Uh. There's a lot of those in Australia. They're not a bad cattle, actually, but I think the best one in Australia is probably the Santa Gertrudis. They're like a good all-rounder. Is that like the, the brown one back there that had yeah, the sort of calf? Red, the yeah. sort of reddy colour, like that colour's got a bit of Santa in that red one. And they're, they've got a, a little bit of um, boss indicus, you know, the Asian Brahmin in them. Yeah. And then short one. Yeah? yeah? You're going to be a little face in the picture, eh? Hey? Future farmer, maybe? Future farmer? She's a good little worker, this girl, aren't you? Oh, that's good. There's always plenty of work to do. What's your favourite job on the farm? Uh, I don't know. If no? it's a house cleaning day, she likes to get up and put her work clothes on, and she says, I'm going to help Dad today. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the house chores, huh? Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> so yesterday she went and she, she um, swept out the shed with Dan and... Did a few jobs with Dad, didn't you? Shifted the sheep? No. Yeah. No? Yeah. No. Okay. Do you like the sheep? Mm. Yeah, they're cute. What's your favourite? The little lammies, eh? Hey? Well, my favourite sheep to wear that we had was Henry. Henry. Why was he your favourite? Because he was funny. Yes. Oh. I was just sitting out the swing and then he just went back and forth, running like jumping like that. Good old Henry. I think Henry's in the freezer now, is he? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Try eat probably if you do that you'd stop crying. Hey, thanks Henry. <laughs> hey, keeping us alive. Yeah, keeping you fed. <laughs> so how long have you been on the farm yourself? Oh uh, well um, when we got married in nineteen ninety nine we bought this farm. Yeah. And so ever since then really, yeah, so about twenty four years. And it was cereal back then, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so and how are you finding the, the sheep turning out? That's been since 2014, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I really love the sheep yeah. and, uh, and the cattle. Um, it's, it's sort of nice to, to be involved in a method of farming that's cyclical. Mm -hmm. So we, we, moved, we wanted to move out of farming where you're constantly buying inputs and not sure what you're getting at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's, it's difficult to sort of manage those cost variables yeah. and... 
you know, waking up every day thinking, what am I going to kill today as far as what plants don't yeah. I want? And so it's sort of a change in your mentality mm -hmm. when we're, we're trying to keep everything in the farm and working in a cycle. Yeah. So we're building fertility and you're sort of building things yeah, instead yeah. of breaking them down. So, so, so that's really nice to have. That. Are you from a farming background yourself, or no? I grew up in uh, in sort of a local city, which mm -hmm. is about an hour and a half away from here. The Toowoomba. Yeah, grew up in Toowoomba, and but my dad, he's German, and he grew up on a farm. So he always used okay. to talk about farming and what they did on their farm. And what did your dad do on their farm? Well, they it was a small farm, but they had about five or six employees, and they grew grew. Um, uh, potatoes and they had animals and he said they would cycle crops around the farm as well okay, so they'd yeah. rest paddocks and yeah so a bit similar to what you're, you're doing now I guess yeah I th and I think that was the old way really and was that back in Germany that he did that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, right. so they did that but he was, his parents died when he was pretty young okay he was about 14 he lost oh, right. both his parents and um and then he came to Australia when he was 21 yeah Okay. So he never really farmed after that. And he's still yeah. living in Toowoomba now? Yeah, he yeah. lives in Toowoomba He loves now. it here? Yeah. yeah, he loves Australia. Yeah. So how do you find like the lifestyle of farming? Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's just a great place to bring up your children. And, yeah. They and love it outdoors by the sounds yeah. of it, yeah. Just have lots of space. And um, you're really only limited by your own imagination, I suppose, in some regards. Australia can be, well, this part of Australia, I suppose most of Australia can be pretty hard sometimes with droughts. and. Yeah. You really have to be um, smart in the way you manage your water and things like that. Yeah, um, we were saying today about, I believe 2019 was your toughest drought. Oh, it was said. terrible, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I suppose getting through that. Well, it just didn't rain nearly for a year. Yeah, so to go for time. a whole year without, like, everything was nearly grey. It was yeah. so dry. It's not, not, and it's not good times. No, nah, so really hard to manage that. We have all the water that we use on this farm for stock and for our gardens and lawns is all um, water in either creeks or lagoons. Mm -hmm. So we haven't ever fully run out of water in a, a big drought, but we've gone very, very close. We have had stock in the, in the yards to sell yeah. the next day and it rained that night and filled up the water so that we didn't have to sell them. So, you got to keep so that's how close yeah. we've gotten. Yeah, yeah. So, so that water is just so crucial to us. It's just like, like all the house water that we have for showers and toilets and and kids um, and cooking is all rainwater. So everything that we catch on the roof, we consume in the house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so you're not attached to any mains water at all. No mains water. And electricity yeah. is that mains or solar? Yeah. Mains. Um, electricity is mains. Okay. Um, that's really the only thing that's mains is, is electricity. And that's just single wire. So we don't have three phase power, we just have single. And so talking back to the little lamb in the freezer, so you, have, you eat all your own meat? Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. And you see that yep. you have a, a garden here starting yeah. to come in. Yeah, a little bit of a veggie garden. So we're gonna try and expand on some of that um, this year, get a, get another little patch ready to What are you to looking go. to grow this year? I really want to get in some, just a nice potato crop and some sweet yeah. potatoes, just something that we can grow and then store a bit longer term yeah. and eat eat through the year. Yeah. Do you get help in the garden or? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Anna doesn't mind helping in the garden. A couple of my sons are very good in the garden. Yeah, Jim that's and, good. Jim and Darcy love the garden, so I think it's because they can get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> the little escape. <laughs> yeah. Escape mum, otherwise I give them a job inside. Do you get many pests? I was hearing how out in the fields with the with the um, sheep you have a lot of problems with like foxes and yes. and dingoes yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, wild dogs. Yeah. Um, in the garden, not so much. Like we don't really have a rabbit problem. We have hares, but we've fenced this garden off. Um, I have some stray chooks that get into the garden uh, sometimes yeah. and, and eat the spinach. Um, and we don't really have I don't have I don't have snails or slug problem, but but I might get that. Yeah. If I if I become a bit of a better gardener. <laughs> you better be gar the better be ga <laughs> the better the gardener, maybe the more problems you'll get. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah. And do you get any um, like kangaroos and possums and stuff like that around? Because we see yeah, one we, yeah, driving in. We do. We have uh, quite a few wallabies. Like wallabies are often eating the, the grass here on the lawn and um, hares. We have hares. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wallabies isn't something that we'd see every day back home. That's no, sure. that's true. So, yeah. It'd be a funny day if you saw a wallaby back <laughs> <Yeah>, home. <definitely. laughs> They're usually pretty smart, the wallabies. Yeah. They, uh, they will jump away from you when you're driving up the road and the kangaroos jump into you. Yeah, I was worried about <laughs> kangaroos on the way here. Yeah. I was terrified that one of them was yeah. going to crash into the car and do some damage. But Oh yeah, well one did to me the other day. Oh, it was smashed right in the side of the car. Yeah, they can cause a lot of damage on cars yeah. and yep. quite dangerous on the road. Oh yeah. You see, you'll, see, you'll see the four-wheel drives getting around out here. With They've just got bull bars all yeah. the way around the car. Yeah, Especially seen, further out west. We've even seen some cars when I was up north with bull bears on the front. Yeah. And stuff, yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah. All right. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for letting us come and yeah, video the welcome. farm. It's been great to see it. Yeah. yeah. Now we always love having people. People yeah. come. I love meeting people from different countries and just seeing what they yeah what they get up to and yeah the different ways of farming. Yeah. Well. I always, find it quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Something new to learn and. It's good for the kids to meet people from different countries and see what they yeah. do, hey. People with funny accents, huh? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. great. Perfect. Well, thank Beauty. you. You're welcome. Okay, so obviously water in, in Australia is would be a big thing with drought and the weather. So how do you supply the land with water? Is it all natural source? Is it off the grid? Uh, this is overland flow. It just runs in. When it rains, and just runs in and fills up. We've got a dam wall up the other end of this hole, and uh, yeah, we catch it like that. And then it's all pumped to the different fields. Yep, we have a electric pump, a suction line down into here, and then with poly pipe, we run it to all the troughs in the paddock for the stock. And um, does this ever run dry? Yeah, in a in a severe drought, it'll run dry, and then we've got a, a backup water hole in the creek that we but we have to put a petrol pump on there. There's no power to that hole. Okay, so have you ever run out of water on the farm? It, um, not totally, we haven't. We've just gone close a couple of times. Okay, and you, do you fear that that might happen sometime in the future? Yeah, or? it could happen, but yeah. we hope not, because that would be a really bad drought. <laughs> <laughs> so how bad did the droughts get over here? Uh, yeah, sometimes, it, look, we had six inches of rain in a year, and that's a really dry year. Yeah. <clears throat> We're supposed to have an average of 26 like uh, 650 mil a year. So. And so are the, the wet seasons over here is in summer? Yep. Because that would be very different to us, the wet season would be in winter back home. Yep. Um, so what are the seasons like? Is it very two season? Is it like how, what um, way do the seasons work over here? What time of the year? Oh, well, summer's yeah, cr Christmas time, December, January, February. And um, yeah, it, gets, it gets hot, but you um, usually get most of your own in summer and you get your most uh, grass growth. That's when mm. we get our good feed. And uh, in winter it's usually gets a bit less rain, but it'll get very cold here. We get um, frost, so it burns off all your good feed. So winter time you usually have less feed for your stock. And so do you ever have to um, supplement feed the animals? Yeah, sometimes through winter we do and in droughts, but um, I try and have our stocking rate going into winter where I um, calculate the feed and make sure we can get through to November. Okay. So we've got enough feed to get through winter without having to use big heaps of hay and yeah. And what kind of crops do you grow on the farm or do you har do much harvest? Uh, we don't grow any crops anymore. We've all grass, but mm -hmm. we do plant multi-species cover crops in the grass, especially in winter, to try and get some extra feed if we get that rain. It'll, and you have all different species that we plant and comes up through the dry grass and, and it gives you extra feed in winter if you're lucky enough to get good rain. And what kind of crops would, would be in that? Uh, it's a mixture, like uh, you can have oats and triticale and then have some brassicas, um, some vetch, like a winter ones, and um, clovers, okay. things like that. Yeah, and do you, how do you sow them? Is it all um, direct drilling or...? Yeah, with a we've got a disc, double disc planter. Okay. Yeah, right. and, and just direct drill straight into the. So you don't plow it all on the farm. No. Okay. No, we try not to have any bare dirt on the farm. Yeah. Try and keep it covered all the time, so that 
if we get any rain, it, it stays in the soil. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So you're all organic farming. Yep. Um, and so what kind of brought on to doing organic? What was the reason behind that? Um, yeah, we just thought that we're spending a lot of money on chemical and seed and fertiliser and there wasn't much left for us. So we didn't have anything to lose by going organic. Mm -hmm. And our expenses did go down a lot and we stopped cropping. Yeah. I planted all the grass, but we had to have... We had our farm businesses going then too to help supplements while we changed into organic. Okay, and is there a lot of rules and regulations over here, like a lot of paperwork to go organic? Yeah, yeah, you get audited every year. Okay. And you have to keep track of all your paperwork and um, if you buy stock, you have to show where they come from or mm -hmm. feed and prove that it's, you know, that it's all organic. You can't, you don't, you wouldn't get away with it if you tried to rule the system. They check it pretty well. Is it, is it hard to get into? Or is it no, easy it's enough? not that hard. It takes takes about three years. Three years to become it, yeah. organic. Okay. So these are the tractors they have here on the farm. So they have two tractors. One's a John Deere, thirty-one twenty. This is their um, seeder. This is their planter. So they do all um, direct drilling. There's the attachments on the back. Don't know if you can see them. So they have the lift arm. Uh, it doesn't look to have a pickup hitch actually, so I suppose it looks pretty similar to what they'd have in France. There she is, and I believe they also have a McCormick, so I'll go over and show you that now. So here's the McCormick that they have, and their wood chopper on the back of it, wood saw. So as they don't plant any crops, um, they don't actually need that many tractors on the farm. So that's the McCormick there. Why is she? A C105 Max. The forks on the front. For today's episode i really hope you guys enjoyed it i found it very interesting going around and seeing all the differences of farming over here so a big thank you to them for taking the time out to show me and uh, getting to see the farms over here and um, it's been a while since i've been on a farm so it's been great to get back outdoors um i really hope you enjoyed it let me know what you guys thought down in the comments hopefully this will be the first of many farms and yeah be sure to stay tuned for any more episodes of comments so hopefully i have I think I have a few more friends lined up for the next few weeks and obviously mum and dad are still filming at home. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.